Uh, we're going to do another example of determining the uh, Ka and pKa of a weak acid based off of its titration curve. So we did that, uh, the first one A previously, so let's so take a look at B. All right, so uh, what are we looking for? What's the really important point on a titration curve that will enable us to determine the Ka? The equivalence point? That's where we're going to look first, but then what, what are we eventually going for? Halfway to the equivalence point. That's really what we want to try to, to, try to get. But yeah, first we're going to have to identify the equivalence point. And that is primarily somewhere where that huge uh, jump in pH occurs. Somewhere in the middle. All right. So I'll say it's uh, somewhere right here. And what I need to find is where that occurred in the titration uh, from a volume standpoint. Okay, so I'll, from that point, I'll go down and think about where that occurred. All right, so that's probably 30, right? And so maybe just uh, a tad past 30, 31 milliliters. 31. 31. Okay, so the equivalent point occurred at 31 milliliters. So the halfway point is 31 divided by 2, right? What, 15.5? 15.5? Okay, okay. All right, so here's 20, so 10 is right there, that's 10. 15 would be halfway there, so there's 15. So just a smidge. That's the technical term. A smidge past that 15 would be 15.5. And so that is our halfway point. So let's follow that up to our titration curve. And then figure out what pH that uh, was uh, the pH of the solution at that point, at that halfway point. So that's my halfway point equals 15.5 milliliters, the equivalence point divided by two. All right, so what's the pH there? Okay, so that is pH five, in between four and six. So 5.5? 5. 5. Okay, I'll buy it. It's gonna go 5.4, but you know, it's uh, Anywhere around there. So pH, and of course the reason why that halfway point is so important is that pH equals the pKa at that point. So pH equals pKa equals 5.5. So that's my pKa. And then uh, when we determine the uh, pK, right after we determine the pK of the um, first acid in this titration curve, we rearrange the equation for pKa to solve for Ka. And so we can do that here as well. The Ka is equal to 10 to the negative pKa. So it equals 10 to the negative 5.5. Then we throw that into our calculator. If we were doing this and we were just like a little off on marking, I didn't know it took up the whole. Yeah, so that's so for this, for these examples, like doing this on paper, of course I'm gonna give you a lot of wiggle room. Yeah, because if you said 5.4 and somebody else says 5.6, those are both fine. And of course, yeah, they're gonna give you different K's. So that's yeah. We'll give you a little wiggle room. Three point two. Three point two times ten to the negative sixth. Everybody like that? All right, so that's how you determine the Ka and pK from an acid. Now, in a second, I'll talk about how we do it uh, a little bit more accurately. But in the meantime, this will give us a good opportunity to ask a question. So which acid, A or B, is stronger? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm hearing a couple Bs. So some people think B is stronger. Why do you think B is stronger? What's that? Smaller PKA? More, so, uh, so I heard some more acidic. So if you're going from the initial pH, you'd have to assume that they started out at the same concentration. We don't know that. Okay, so we couldn't go just based off the pH. Um, a started out at a much higher pH, but it could have just been less concentrated. Um, so we don't know initially. If they're the same concentration, yes, the one with the uh, lower pH initially would be stronger. But going off of, so since we don't technically know that, going off of the pKa, whichever has the lowest pKa is stronger, or we could even go off the Ka, whichever has the bigger Ka, and I heard it over there, uh, ionizes more. So yeah, either of those lines of logic is perfect, and yes, B is the stronger.